Next day from my local newspaper, ominous unknown. Killer still at large. After weeks of unexplained murders, the ominous killer is still on the rise. After little evidence has been found, the young boy states he survived one of the killer's attacks and bravely tells his story. I had it by dream, and I woke up in the middle of the night, says the boy. I, for some reason, saw that my window was open, even though I could remember being it closed before I went to bed. I got up, shut it, once more. Afterwards, I simply crawled under my covers and tried to get back to sleep. That's when I had a strange feeling, like someone was watching me. I looked up and he jumped out of my bed, and a little ray of light illuminating from, a, from between my curtains was a pair of eyes. These weren't regular eyes. They were dark, ominous eyes. They bordered in black and just plain out terrified me. When I saw his mouth, a long, horrendous smile that made every hair on my body stand up, I figured I the figure stood there watching me. Finally, after what seemed like forever, he said it. A simple phrase, but said in the only way a madman could speak. He said, go to sleep. I let out a scream that sent him at me. He pointed a knife aiming for my heart. He jumped up on the foot top of my bed. I fought back. I kicked. I punched. I rolled around trying to knock him off me. That's when my dad busted in. He threw through the knife and went in my dad's shoulder. The man probably would have finished him off if the neighbors hadn't alerted the police. We drove into the parking lot. I ran towards the door. The man turned and ran down the hallway. I heard a smash like glass breaking. As I came out of my room, I saw that it was pointing towards the back of my house. It was broken. I could see him running in the distance. I could tell you one thing. I'll never forget that face, those cold, evil eyes, and that psychotic smile that will never leave my head. The police are still on the look for this man. If you see anyone who fits the description in this story, please contact the local police department. He and his family had just moved into the new neighborhood. His dad had gotten a promotion at work, and they thought it would be new to, to in one of those fancy neighborhoods. Jeff and his brother Lou couldn't complain though. A new new house what was not to love? As they were getting packed, one of the neighbors came by. Hello, she said. I'm Barbara. I live across the street from you. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself and introduce my son. She turned and called her son. Billy, these are our new neighbors. Billy, Billy said hi and then ran back to play in his yard. Well, so Jeff's mom, I'm Margaret, and this is my husband Peter, and my two sons, Jeff and Lou. They each introduced themselves, and then Barbara invited them to her son's birthday. Je Jeff and his brother were about to object when their mother said they would love to. When Jeff and his when Jeff and his family were done packing, Jeff went up to his room. Mom, why did you invite us to some kid's party? If you haven't noticed, I'm not some dumb kid. Jeff said his mother, "We just moved here, and we would we would we should show that we want to spend time with our neighbors." Now, we're going to that party, and that's final. Jeff started to talk, but stopped himself, knowing that he couldn't do anything. Whenever his mom said something was final, said something, it was final. He walked up to his room, hopped down on the bed. He sat there, looking at the ceiling. Suddenly, he got a weird feeling. Not so much a pain, but a weird feeling. He dismissed it as some random feeling. He heard his mother call him down to get his stuff, and then he walked down to get it. The next day... Jeff walked down the stairs to get breakfast and get ready for school. As he sat there eating breakfast once again, he got that feeling. This time it was stronger, gave him a slight tugging pain. And once again, he dismissed it. He and Lou, as he and Lou finished breakfast, he walked down to the bus stop. They sat there waiting for the bus, and then all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumped over them only inches from their lap. They both jumped back in surprise. Hey, what the hell? The kid landed and turned back to them. He kicked, off his, kicked up his skateboard and caught it with his hands. The kid seemed to be twelve, one year younger than Jeff. He wore an air fossil sh shirt, ripped blue jeans, and ripped blue jeans. Well, well, well. Looks like we got some new meat. Suddenly, two other kids appeared. Um, appeared. One was super skinny, and the other was huge. Well, since you're new here, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over there's Keith. <coughs> Jeff and then look over the skinny kid. He had a dopey face that I would expect a psychic to have. And he's Troy. He looked at the fat kid. Talking about a tub of lard. This kid looked like he hadn't exercised since he was crawling. <coughs> and I, said the first kid, am Randy. Now, for all the kids in this neighborhood, there's a small price for bus fare. If you catch my drift. Lou stood up, ready to punch the lights out of the kids. Kid, kid's eyes. When one of, one of his friends pulled a knife on him. Tsk, tsk, tsk. I hope you had. I hope you would have been more co cooperative. 
We must do this the hard way. The kid walked up to Lou and took the wallet out of his pocket. Jeff got that feeling again. Now it's truly strong. A burning sensation. He stood up. Lou gestured him to sit down. Jeff ignored him and walked up to the kid. <laughs> Listen here, you little punk. Give my grandpa's wallet or else. Manny put the wallet in his pocket and pulled out his own knife. Oh, and what are you? What will you do? Just as he finished his sentence, Jeff popped the kid in the nose. As Randy reached for his face, Jeff grabbed the wrist and broke it. Randy screamed. Jeff's knife. Randy screamed. Screamed, and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rushed him. But Jeff was too quick. He threw Randy to the ground. Keith lashed out at him. But Jeff ducked and stabbed him in the arm. Keith dropped the knife and fell to the ground, screaming. Troy rushed him too. Jeff didn't even need the knife. He just punched Troy straight in the stomach. Troy went down. As he fell, he puked all over. Lou, Lou couldn't do nothing. Just look in amazement. Jeff, how did you? That was when. That was all he said. When I saw the bus coming, they knew they'd be blamed for the whole thing. So they started running as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driver rushing over to Randy and, and the others. As Jeff and Lou made it to school, they didn't dare tell what happened. All they did was sit and listen. Lou thought that his brother was just beating up a few kids, but Jeff knew it was more. It was something. It was something scary. As he got that feeling, he felt it was. He felt how powerful it was. The urge to just hurt someone. He didn't like it. How it sounded. But he couldn't help feeling happy. He felt a strange feeling go away and stay for the entire day of school. Even as they walked home, do the whole thing near the bus stop, and how they probably wouldn't be taking the bus anymore, he felt happy. When they got home, his parents asked him how his day was, and he said in a somewhat ominous voice, it was a wonderful day. Next morning, he heard a knock at the front door. He walked down to find two policemen at his door, and his mother looking back with an angry look. Jeff, these officers tell me that you attacked three kids, and then it wasn't a regular fighting, that they were stabbed? Stabbed, son! Jeff's gaze fell to the floor, throwing them it was true. Mom, they were the ones who pulled the knives on me and Lou. Son, said one of the cops, we found these. We found three kids, two stabbed, one having a bruise on his stomach. We have witnesses proving that you fled the scene. Now what does that tell us? Jeff knew it was no use. He could, he could say him and Lou had been attacked, but then no, there was no proof, proof of it. When, when there was, they, they were attacked first. He, he couldn't say they weren't fleeing because, truth be told, they were. So Jeff couldn't defend himself or Lou. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it since, since it was him who beat up all those kids. Sir, it was me. I was the one who beat up those kids. Lou tried to hold me back, but I couldn't stop. He couldn't stop me. The cops looked at his partner. They both nod. Well, kid, looked like a year in juvie. Wait, says Lou. They all turn around and see him holding a knife. The officers pull their guns and lock them on Lou. It was me. I beat up those little punks. I have the marks to prove it. He lifted up his sleeve to reveal cuts and bruises as if he was in a struggle. Son, just put down the knife. The officer said the officer. Lou held up the knife and dropped it to the ground. He put his hands hands up and walked over to the cops. No, Lou, it was me. Tell him. I did it. Jeff had tears running down his face. Huh. Poor bro. Trying to take the blame for what I did. Well, take me away. The police just said. The police led Lou out to the patrol car. Lou, tell him it was me! Tell him! I was the one who beat up those kids! Jeff's mother put her hands on his shoulders. Jeff, please, you don't have to lie. We know it's Lou. You can stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the cop car sped off, speeds off with Lou inside. A few minutes later, Jeff's dad pulls in the driveway, seeing Jeff's face and knowing something's wrong. Son? Son, what is it? Jeff couldn't answer. His vocal cords were strained from crying. Instead, Jeff's mother walked his father inside to break the news to him. Jeff wept in, as Jeff wept in the driveway. An hour later, or so, an hour later or so, Jeff walked back inside to the house, seeing his parents were both shocked and sad, disappointed. He couldn't look at them. He couldn't see how they thought of Lou when it was his fault. He just went to sleep, trying to get the whole thing out of his mind. 
Two days went by with no word from Lou at JDC. His friends, no friends to hang out with, nothing but sadness and guilt. That was until Saturday when Jeff's mother woke up with a happy, shiny face. <clears throat> Jeff, it's today, she said, and she opened the curtains and let light flood in his room. Well, what's today? Jeff, as Jeff says, as he stirs awake, why, it's Billy's party. Now he was fully awake. Mom, you're joking, right? You don't expect me to go to some kid's party after... There's a long pause. Well, Jeff, we both know what happened, but I think this could be, could be the thing that brightens up the past few days. Now, get dressed. His mother walked out of the room, room and downstairs, ready to get her, ready to, to get ready herself. He fought himself to get up. He picked up some random shirt and pairs of jeans and walked downstairs. He saw his mother and father all dressed up. His mother, his mother in a dress, his father in a suit. He thought, why? They would ever wear such fancy clothes to a kid's party. Son, is that all you're going to wear? Jeff said Jeff's mom. Better than wearing too much, he said. His mother pu pushed down the feeling to yell at him and hit it with a smile. Now, Jeff, you may be overdressed, but this is how you go if you want to make an impression. His, his father said. Jeff grunted, grunted and went back up to his room. I don't have any fancy clothes, he yelled down the stairs. Just pick something, called his mother. He looked around the closet for what he would call fancy. He just picked out a pair of black dress pants he had for special occasions, an undershirt. He couldn't find any shirt to go with it, though. He looked around, only found striped and patterned shirts, none of which would go with dress pants. Finally, he found a white hoodie and put it on. You're wearing that, they both said. His mother, his mother looked at her watch. Oh, no time to change. Let's just go. She said it she said it she heard heard her Jeff and her father out the door. They crossed the street over to Barbara and Billy's house. They knocked on the door and Barbara appeared. This just like his parents, way overdressed. They walked inside. Jeff could see no see adults. No kids. The kids are in the backyard, Jeff. How about you go out and meet some of them? said Barbara. Jeff walked outside in a yard full of kids. They were running around and wearing co cowboy costumes and shooting each other with plastic guns. He might as well be standing in a Toys R Us. Suddenly a kid came up to him and handed him a, a toy gun and a hat. Hey, mister, wanna play? He said, uh, no kid, I'm way too old for this stuff. The kid looked up to him with a weird puppy dog face. Please, said the kid. Fine, said Jeff. He put on the hat and started to pretend to shoot at the kids. At first thought it was totally ridiculous, but they started to actually have fun. It might not have been super cool, but the first time he had done something that took his mind off Lou. So he played with the kids for a while, until he heard a noise, a weird rolling noise. Then it hit him. Randy, Troy, and Keith all jumped over the fence, their skateboard, with their skateboards. Jeff dropped the fake gun and ripped off the hat. Ripped off the hat. Randy looked at Jeff, bur with burning hatred. Hello, Jeff, is it? We have some unfinished business. Jeff saw his bruised nose. I think we're even. I beat the crap out of you and you got my brother such a JDC. Randy had an angry look in his eyes. Oh no, I don't go for even. I go for winning. Now you may have kicked our asses that day, that one day, but not today. As he said that, Randy rushed him. They both fell to the ground. Randy punched Jeff in the nose. He grabbed his ears and headbutted him. Jeff pushed Randy off of him and off of him and rose to their feet. The kids were screaming, parents were running out of the house, throwing Keith to pull guns out of their pockets. Randy pulled a knife out instead in Jeff and stabbed it into Jeff's shoulder. They screamed and they fell to, the, to his knees. Randy started kicking Jeff him in the face. After after three kicks, Jeff grabs his foot and twists it, causing Randy to fall to the ground. Jeff stood up and walked over to the back door. Troy grabbed him. Need some help? He picked up Jeff and... Jeff by the collar and throws him through the patio door. As Jeff tries to stand, he's kicked down to the ground. Randy repeatedly starts kicking Jeff until he starts to cough up blood. Come on, Jeff, fight me! He picks up Jeff and throws him into the kitchen. Randy sees a bottle of vodka on the counter and smashes the glass over Jeff's head. Head. Fight! He throws Jeff back in the living room. Come on, Jeff, look at me! Jeff glances up, his face riddled with blood. 
I was the one who got your brother sent to JDC. You know you're just gonna sit there and let him rot in there for a whole year? You should be ashamed. Jeff starts to get up. Oh, finally, you stand and fight. Jeff is now at his feet, blood and vodka on his face. Once again, he hits that strange feeling, a one in which he hadn't ha hadn't felt for a while. Finally, he's up, says Randy as he runs at Jeff. That's when it happens. Something inside Jeff snaps. His psyche is destroyed. All rational thinking is gone. All he can do is kill. He grabs Randy and pile drives him to the ground. He gets on top of him and punches him straight in the heart. The punch causes Randy's heart to stop. As Randy gasps for breath, Jeff hammers down on him, punch after punch. Bran blood gushes from Randy's body until he takes one final breath and dies. Everyone is looking at, at Jeff now. The parents, the crying kids, even Troy and Keith, although easily break from their gaze. They point their guns at Jeff. Jeff sees the guns trained on him, trains for, on him, and, r and races for the stairs. He runs up. He he runs. Troy and Keith let out fire on him. Each shot missing. Jeff runs up the stairs. He hears Troy and Keith follow up behind. As they let with their final round of bullets, Jeff ducks into the bathroom, grabs a towel rock, rips it off the wall. Jeff, qu Troy and Keith race in. Not as ready. Troy, Troy swings his knife at Jeff, who backs away and bangs the towel rock into Troy's face. Troy goes down hard. Now, no, no, now on his left is Keith. He's more agile than Troy, and he ducks when Jeff swings the towel rack. He dropped the knife and grabbed Jeff by the neck and pushed him into the wall. Things of bleach fell on top of them from the top shelf. It burnt both of them. Jeff wiped his eyes as it best he could. He pulled back a towel rack and swung it straight into Keith's head. As he lay there, bleeding to death, let out an ominous smile. It was so funny. Asked Jeff as he pulled out a lighter and switched it on. It's funny, he said. You're covered in, in vodka and bleach. Jeff's eyes widened as Keith threw a lighter at him. As soon as the flame made contact with him, flames ignited. Al the alcohol and the vodka. <coughs> While the alcohol burned him, the bleach bleached his skin. But Jeff let out a terrible screech as he caught on fire. He tried to roll a fire up, but there was no use. The alcohol had made him a walking inferno. He ran down the, down the hall, hall and fell into the stairs. Everybody started screaming as they saw Jeff, now a man on fire. He dropped down to the ground, nearly dead. last thing he saw was his mother and other parents trying to extinguish the flame. That's when he passed out. Jeff woke up. He had a cast, rest, cast around his face. He couldn't see anything. But he felt the cast on the shoulder and the switches over his body. He had tried to stand up, but he realized there was some tube in his arm. And when he tried to get up, a nurse rushed in. Rushed in. I don't think you can get out of bed just yet, she said as he put the tube back in his arm. He heard his mother come in. Honey, are you okay? She asked. Jeff couldn't answer through the face. Through his face was covered. He was unable to speak. Oh, honey, I have great news. After all, the witnesses told the police that Randy confessed to trying to attack you. They decided to let Lou go. Somebody Jeff almost pull up, half stopping halfway, remembering the tube coming out of his arm. He'll be out by tomorrow. And the two of you will be able to gather again. Jeff's mother hugs Jeff, says goodbye, says her goodbyes, and after a couple of weeks, when Jeff was visited by family. Then the came, came, day came when... His bandages were to be removed. His family were all, were all there. Were they all there to see it? He, when see it? What it would look like? As soon as the doctors unwrapped the bandages from Jeff's face, everyone was on the edge of their seats. They waited until the last bandage, holding the cover over his face, was almost removed. Let's hope for the best," said the doctor. As he pulled the cloth, letting the rest fall from Jeff's face. Jeff's mother screams at the side of his face. Then when his dad just stare, awestruck at his face. What? What happened to my face? Said Jeff as he rushed out of his bed and ran to the bathroom. He looked in the mirror and saw the cause of his stress. His face. It... It's horrible. His lips burnt to a deep shade of red. His face turned pure white color. His hair singed from brown to black. He slowly put a hand to his face 
It had a sort of leathery feel to it now. He looked at back to his family and back to the mirror. Jeff. It's not that bad. Not bad, said Jeff. It's perfect. His family were equally surprised. Jeff started laughing uncontrollably. His parents noticed that his left eye and hand were twitching. Left eye and hand were twitching. Uh, Jeff, are you okay? Okay? I've never felt more happy. <laughs> Look at me. This face goes perfectly with me. He couldn't stop laughing. He stroked his face, feeling it, looking at it in the mirror. What caused this? What? You may feel... You may recall that when Jeff was fighting Randy, something in his mind, his sanity, snapped. Now that he was left as a crazy killing machine, his, pa his parents didn't know. Doctor, says Jeff's mom, is my son all right, you know, in the head? Yes, this is perfectly normal for someone who's been on a lot... Lot, taking lots of painkillers. Oh, thank you, doctor," said Jeff's mom, and they went over to Jeff. "Jeff, sweetie, it's time to go." Jeff looks away from the mirror. His, his face still forming into a crazy smile. Came on me. <laughs> his mother looked. Mother took him by the shoulder to get his clothes. This is what he came in," said the lady at the desk. Jeff's mom looked down and see the black dress pants and white hoodie his son wore. Now we're now we're clean of blood and stitched together. Jeff's mom led him back to the room and made him put his clothes on. Then they left, not knowing this was their final day of life. Later, later, Jeff's mother woke up to a sound coming from the bathroom. It sounded as if someone was crying. He slowly walked over to see what it was. Then she noticed in the bathroom. She saw a horrendous sight. Jeff had taken a knife and carved a smile into his cheeks. Jeff, what are you doing? His mother asked. Jeff looked into the mirror. I couldn't keep smiling, Mommy. It hurt after a while. Now I can smile forever. Jeff's mother noticed his eyes, ringed in black. Jeff, your eyes! His eyes were seemingly never closing. I couldn't see my face. I got tired. My eyes started to close. I burned out the eyelids so I could see my face forever. Jeff's mother slowly turned back. Slowly started to back away, seeing his son was going insane. What's wrong, Mommy? Aren't I beautiful? Yes, son, she said. You are. Let me go get Daddy so you can see your face. She ran into the room and shook Jeff's dad awake from his sleep. Honey, get the gun. We. Jeff. She stopped and turned and she saw Jeff in the doorway holding the knife. Mommy, you lied. That's the last thing they heard as Jeff rushed them with the knife, gutting both of them. His brother and Lou woke up, startled by some noise. He didn't hear anything else, so he figured. I well, just figured it was nothing, and shut his eyes, and tried to go back to sleep. I see, he was on the border of slumber, he got the strangest feeling, like someone was watching him. He looked up, before Jeff's hand co covered his mouth. He slowly raised the knife, ready to plunge it into Lou. Lou thrashed, trying to, trying to escape Jeff's grip. <sighs> Jeff said, just go to sleep.